So I was taking a walk the other day, and it was actually a combination of walking, running, and jogging, because uh, I'm trying to, you know, get right for, uh, you know, Big Game James. He's trying to, you know, beat me one on one. He he don't think I can run routes no more. So I mean, I'm just trying to show him up in that. But uh, besides that, I was, you know, when I was outside jogging, I was thinking about it. You know, I was thinking about this word I've been throwing around, dynasty. You know, uh, I've been saying it in a few live streams. My man, Space Cowboy Seventeen. Um, he just put a video out about the whole notion of the Cowboys being in dynasty mode. But the more you think of it, the more you come up with these, with these pieces, right? With these pieces of what we're doing here, with these pieces of what we're, of, of what we have on this team. And you can't help but to be in the thought of, yo man, like, look, we can win a Super Bowl this year. We can win the next one and the next one, you know? I think we've extended our window with um, with the way that we've been putting things together. So I got a handful of reasons talking about why I think we're a dynasty team, and I may cover that over a series of videos. But today, I'm going to talk specifically about your wide receivers and all the woes that come with wide receivering. Also, um, you may see me do something, you know, like flash to a second camera angle or something like that. Um, I'm not trying to use that camera angle in particular. Um, it's just that I'm trying to do everything to make this channel better. So with making the channel better, you may see me, um, you know, stunting to this second camera right here just so I can learn how to do uh, two camera angle stuff. So um, this should be fun. So nothing makes me more frustrated when we have needed something and we finally take the measures to put things in place. And once we have things in place, there's a cowboy fan somewhere that want to strip it back down to where it was at first. Think about this, man. Once upon a time, we, we actually thought as a fan base, front office, organization, everybody, right? We thought that, you know, this offense was going to be so smooth Zeke was going to be such a focal point of this offense that we can run out Deontay Thompson, okay, Terrence Williams, Bryce Butler, and Cole Beasley. Somewhere we thought that was a good idea. We go through the season and we realize how terrible of an idea that it is, right? We continue to grow. We get Amari Cooper. We start smoking boots with Amari Cooper, right? Gallup gets hurt. Amari Cooper's by himself. Boy, we can't live with Amari Cooper by himself. Cooper gets hurt right around the Jets game or something like that. All right, Michael Gallup, time for you to step up. Can you do it by yourself? Gallup can't do it by himself. So we're in a situation where, okay, we don't want Coop to do it by himself. We uh, don't want to be in a situation where we don't want the number two guy to do it by himself. So what do we do? What do we do? Let's get three guys that work and let's see how good it is, right? We finally get three guys that work. We top five in all in all stats, all offensive metrics. I think we like two in total, maybe. And we finally get three wide receivers. Three possible, considerable, what you would call number one receivers. And what do we do? We try to trade one of them for Jamal Adams. That's what makes me sick. That's what's getting on my nerves right now. The actual notion that we finally fixed this problem. I know it's a lot of Dak haters out there. And if you hate Dak Prescott, you should be the last one that's trying to trade a wide receiver away from this team. I know what it was like <laughs> to run Alan Hearns out there hoping that he can make change. Deontay Thompson and those guys. We finally got something that's top tier. If you think about, you know, other great offenses, right? Think about the greatest Sean Turf, right? Think about what Arizona was doing when they had Fitz and um and Antoine Bolden and I forgot buddies, uh the, the, the third guy with them or whatever. That 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 cat. Or how the Patriots have three reliable receivers when they go undefeated. Hell, the team that just won a Super Bowl, that just won a Super Bowl. Okay, Tyreek wasn't enough. They had to go find somebody else that ran a 4 2 40. They got the, one of the best tight ends in the game, pro probably the best, best receiving tight end in the game. Let's go get Sammy White. Let's bring in some more help. Let's bring in as much help as we possibly can so we can drop dimes on offense. You know, if you listen to some of the, the logic of the trade Gallup camp, 
or whatever. They'd be like, oh, Vice, you can find a, you can find another receiver. Let CD Lamb be the number two guy. Let Coop be number one, and you know, just just find just find another Gallup. It's incredibly hard to find wide receiver. Take it from all these teams that can't find a receiver. How damn hard it is to find a receiver. Let alone having a number one receiver. You know what I'm saying? Ha having having a problem of of trying to find one one of those guys. You mean to tell me that if I have two of those guys, I could be successful? But what if I have three of those guys? Right? Why you want to take away from your overkill? Fun fact: Did y'all know that we have not one 30-year-old on this offense? Like we have an offense full of 20-year-olds, right? And I think the youngest offensive guy, uh, not named C.D. Lamb, because he's the only rookie that's going to be on the first team offense, but um, the youngest non-C.D. Lamb guy is Connor Williams, and he's going into his third year. So we got a young nucleus of core guys on offense, but we have very experienced guys, right? Tyron Smith is 29 years old and I feel like he's been playing for 13 years, you know? I think Zach Martin is the second oldest on the team. Then like Lael or something, maybe possibly. But Amari Cooper's 25 years old. Zeke's 23, 24, something like that. Dax 24, Gallup is 23, 24. Lamb is 2021. 20, I'm sure there's some 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 uh some age and logistics nerds that's gonna help me out and put the actual ages in the comment sections and you know chat box for everybody. But we're in a really rare position. And when I say words like dynasty, right? We're in a rare position where we have an incredibly veteran team, but we're a veteran squad full of young mid 20 year olds. And I think that's a very rare thing in the National Football League, and I'm ready to smoke the hell out of everybody. Let me tell you how the Chiefs won a Super Bowl. Um, the 49ers were giving them all kind of zone coverage, because that's how you start off playing the Chiefs, because they're so fantastic, you got to start off that way. And you've got to keep finding holes in zone coverage, and you make them play man coverage, right? You've got to earn man coverage. Just like on the other side, you got to stop the run to earn pass rush. you got to stop zone to earn man. And then once they ended up in man coverage, then you can take advantage of your matchups. Then you can, you know, move guys around, put people in motion to take advantage of that good man stuff, right? So we know that the Cowboys can beat zone coverage. Dak Prescott's pretty good at beating zone coverage. I will not listen to any I Am Legend monster that disagrees with that. Um, but once you get man coverage, something that you're not gonna get a lot of is you're not gonna get a lot of any team that got corners that can just beat us man to man, right? It may be a handful of teams that, that can kind of try to pull it off, but let's just say, for example, uh, the the Eagles, maybe, right? The Eagles got Darius Slay, who's the Cooper eraser. And I think if Cooper's healthy, he could smoke the hell out of Darius Slay. But let's say he can't, right? If Darius Slay shuts down Amari Cooper, those same Eagles cornerbacks that couldn't cover last year are covering Michael Gallup now. Michael Gallup is a matchup. Well, damn, let's try to put a linebacker over there to kind of bracket and help out with the Michael Gallup coverage. Fine, C.D. Lamb over there is with a civilian. You know what I'm saying? So you just working towards, you working towards mismatches or whatever. Your tight end last year caught the ball, he either fell down in slow motion or him and the defender ran backwards for five yards, okay? You finally got a tight end that can go forward and get you some yak yards, you know what I mean? And all that is made because of matchups. Tony Paul out of the backfield. You don't wanna limit your matchups, right? Not only that, but if Cooper, if, if, if Cooper's plantar fasciitis gets bad, right? If Amari Cooper's plantar fasciitis get bad and something happened with Gallup, now you got CeeDee Lamb, Devin Smith, and Cedric Wilson that you're running out there for your wide receiver ones. And we can't say that it can't happen because last year Gallup and Cooper got hurt. You know what I'm saying? Stop trying to give away your resources, bro. I sincerely think that we're in an incredibly, incredibly rare position, like a greatest show on turf type of position. You know what I mean? Like everybody wants to ask, well, Vach, you, wanna, you want Dak to be the highest paid quarterback in the league. Is he better than Pat Mahomes? Is he the best? quarterback in the league is he elite and my answer is no and he ain't got to be um it's i mean that's just the rules new quarterbacks they get paid the highest that's just how it is well when watson and mahomes and baker i guess if he gets some money um 
you know, and all those guys, when they get their payday, then Dak gonna be down the list somewhere, right? So now you got Dak down the list and all the way till 2022, Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper, and CeeDee Lamb on contract with Ezekiel Elliott, with Blake Jarwin, with Tony Pollard. Don't take parts away from your offense, man. You want to run this team through your offense. Why? Because you don't know if your defense is that legit or not, you know? And if we had to pick a strength, I'm sure we would say, um, we would say offense, you know what I'm saying? So Jerry Jones always say this, you're like, look, you, you need to make your strength your strength, you know? You don't need to have a defense that you got questions about and an offense that you're taking pieces from. Because even, let, let, me, let me just tell you this, even if you, Michael Gallup, what he does for this offense with Coop and with Lamb and with Zeke and with Dak or whatever, he's a part of what makes this offense elite. Jamal Adams, do, he does not make this defense elite. Hmm. Write that down somewhere. Jamal Adams does not make this defense elite. He makes it a better defense. He makes it a really pretty even more better good defense and we super upgrade the box safety position but does he make the defense elite no but if you get rid of michael gallup you no longer have three number one receivers because cd lamb ain't ready to be a number one receiver yet he's in the oven still um it's, it's, it's just not even close I understand that we got Michael Gallup in the third round and that makes people think that you could just go find another Michael Gallup in the third round. I don't think it really works like that because if you look at other other third round receivers, they don't really, they're not putting up like Michael Gallup put up. Um, if you looked at my wide receiver rankings from 2018, you'll probably have to go find that video or whatever. Michael Gallup was a top five receiver to me. It just happens that, you know, he just fell to the third round. I can't make teams draft correctly or whatever, but um, but cool, we have a 1B uh, receiver, right? This is what's interesting about safeties. The best safeties, even the good ones, they don't start going till late first. You know what I mean? I understand Jamal Adams was drafted sixth overall, but I think the Jets made a mistake with that because I think the league is trending more towards drafting safeties later because I don't think there's a true, let me not say that, like, there's an impact with safeties, but strong safeties, you can find those guys to do the job. Also, you would much rather put your stock into a pass rusher or a D lineman or somebody that's a top tier lockdown corner or something like that. Strong safety is way down the list of priorities with one tech and Sam linebacker. So in recent history, all your favorite safeties have been there in the second and third round. Um, in 2019 draft, sure. The 2019 draft, hell you, you, you know, cowboy fans had like seven safeties that they wanted and we'll get to the, to the, to the end of the second round. Like, whoop, so that person's still there. End of the third, whoop, that person's still there. All the way to Chauncey Gardner Johnson. He's, he, he, he's around. I do, I do think highly of Jamal. I do think Jamal is fantastic. I do think Jamal is great. But if I was to get a safety, I would get a safety that help other players on my defense, like a free safety. A free safety over the top of Cheeto makes Cheeto better. Jamal Adams in the box doesn't make anybody better. He's just another soldier in your run game. You see what I mean? So this ain't me hating on Jamal Adams, man. I'm not hating on jamal adams man i, I just want to be realistic about um position importance position importance you know well vash he's the best safety in the league would y'all pay a big ass dollar amount for the best kicker in the league or the best punter in the league my bad that's a bit extreme what about the best sam linebacker in the league think about who's the best sam linebacker would you pay top, would you pay top dollar for that right now or would you just draft a sam linebacker you would draft a sam linebacker what about nickel corner right would you pay 16 million dollars for the best nickel corner in the league right now no you would probably just draft a guy or use a guy on your team and plug him in a nickel corner and he'll get the job done until you can find somebody different not hating on nickel corners but that's just what the vibes are right but when we start talking about three ticks we start talking about pass rushes we start talking about receivers quarterbacks offensive linemen that conversation gets incredibly different 
that conversation gets different. I know a lot of y'all aren't fans of offense. I am a fan of offense. Um, and I don't think there's a bias because I'm a fan of offense, but this thing can be the greatest show on turf. It legitimately can be. And I just don't want that to be stripped away just cause y'all want a box safety. And there's nothing wrong with calling Jamal Adams a box safety. Some people get offended by that. Oh, Vice, he's more than just a box safety. That's false. Cause I'll tell you, what is Jamal Adams really, really good at? He's really good at um, lining up in the box. <laughs> First of all, stopping the run in the box, covering tight ends in the box. If you don't have a super twitchy slot receiver, he could probably help you there. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing that's close to the line of scrimmage. So y'all putting Jamal Adams at free safety? I'm not putting Jamal Adams at free safety. I know there's a lot of Cowboy fans that will say, well, watch, Jamal Adams can play free safety. Sure, but can he play free safety better than Ha Ha Clint Dix? I don't think he can. You know, he could play strong safety better than anybody on this team. But what do you need a strong safety to do? That our guys can't do that he can do. You know? He does it at a more elite level, but he can do it. We have players that can do what he does. You know? So if he's not playing deep free safety that's shading over a cornerback that's making that cornerback's job a little easier, I just don't consider strong safeties to be up there, up there. That's all I had to say, man. You know, I just want I, I wasn't even gonna do this video right now, but um uh, hell man, I just wanted to cut the cameras on and ramble. I was outside working out. I was thinking about this as I was working out. Um, so I just wanted to just get it out real quick while the thoughts were just kind of fresh on my mind. So appreciate y'all for tuning in. Shouts out to my Patreon, PayPal, Cash App, Merch Gang. Um, everybody that subscribed to this channel, all the links you would need to help me out are in the description. All the links you need to follow everything is in the description. This channel is upgrading slowly, but surely day by day, I'm learning new things to, you know, kind of boost the production of things or whatever. So I appreciate y'all patience, appreciate y'all hanging in there with me and um, let's keep working. Let's keep working to be great. And um, at some point I'm gonna drop a Joe Looney film session, um, making fun of um, how bad Joe Looney was. Not even making fun of, but some people think you need to start this year. And I think that's just blasphemy. All right. Y'all hold it down for the doski. Why did I just clap? Y'all hold it down for the doski, woski, and the peace, whiskey, man. Till next time. Peace. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.